Pink Fohawk is a crass, vulgar, violent, raunchy podcast that is meant for immature adult audiences only. Content warning is available in the description. Welcome to Pink Fuck, everybody. Dan, Chris, welcome back. Hey, how you doing, Ben? How you doing, Chris? <laughs> I'm doing fucking fantastic. You're like, hey, how you doing? How you doing, guys? How, how you doing? What's up? Hey, how's it going? How's, how's you guys? How's your, how's your balls? How's your mother? How's your mother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking a beer called Boulevard 89, which I think is appropriate. It's the mm. recipe from 89. That's when Shadowrun was written. Dude. 89, baby. I'm drinking a beer called New Belgium 1985. Oh, that was when Christian was created. And you? It's got like mango in it. It's so good. Oh, nice. It's getting me in the mood. I'm just drinking an Allagash White. Just a classic New England brew. Just nice and clean. Dan and I are fucking rocking 80s recipes right now. Method. Are they really both 80s recipes? Though? Mine is, I, but... Mine is not. <laughs> I don't know about this, but mine is. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Hey, I just got to plug this real quick. We got a Discord. We got a YouTube channel. People join them up. Reddit. We got a subreddit. We got a lot of shit. We got a shot. If you haven't subscribed to this podcast, you should. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Just remember to hit that bell. Get all those notifications. <laughs> right. Slap that fucking like button right now. And then roll... <laughs> fucking body roll its body roll for soak see if it gets a full deadly wound if it gets deadly wound then you liked it that's a shadow run joke for you guys <laughs> we're slowly getting acclimated yeah you guys are veteran shadow runners now. i was gonna say we, we probably played more shadow run than most people you at have. this point even though we have no idea how we're playing tonight is episode 20 episode 20 holy shit it only took us a year and a half to get there that's not bad yeah some people made 200 episodes in the same span of time <laughs> <laughs> I commend Dan and Ben for their efforts. In the middle of our podcast recently, ever since the finale, we feature a promo from one of our buddy podcasts. Tell the Manticore. Uh, those guys, you couldn't be further from us in tone. I mean, it's a serious, dark podcast. It's yeah, just it always is. really funny to be that we hear play that fucking promo right in the middle of like a stupid shenanigan that we're in the middle of. <laughs> yeah. And the dude's like, are you tired of this shit? <laughs> yeah. But the quality of that podcast, he puts a lot of attention to detail and to the storytelling and the production value and it's a sick podcast i do actually highly yeah. recommend it. i've listened but. to an episode it's really good i don't listen to as many podcasts as i used to now that we work on this but it's funny when you start making something it like kills your love for the art of it a little bit on that note let's get back to this <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway yeah we gotta get some intros who's first you do it you do it christian you do it Here's the thing. I, Christian, I played John Anderson. <laughs> he, he was a yuppie businessman trying to keep up with his expensive habits after he left a megacorp. But now he's, he's, I'm not sure who John Anderson is anymore. He was, he's a cult we leader. Know. He's, he's actually got more money than he, than he usually has. He spent no he's, money. He's a little bit lost. He's, he had a goal. He had a goal, which was to, to keep making money after his, uh, leaving the Megacorp, and now that he's reached that goal, he doesn't even know what the fuck he's doing. He, he has plenty of money. He's sitting on a pile of cash. And now he's running this scheme? Who, who is John Anderson? Who is John Anderson? He's an enigma wrapped in a riddle. He's got plans. I don't, I know, what, I don't know what the fuck's happening with John. He's on the run. I, I see John is on the run. I believe that. I believe that Christian does not know. <laughs> he's on the run. He's on the run from himself. From himself, yeah. yeah. What are you running from, John? Dan, do you have an equally conversational intro? I do. My name's Dan, and I play Tina Pernia. She's just a mountain of meaty troll muscle out there looking for a friend. She's cracking skulls, and she's crushing balls. As you know, she cracks the skulls, and she crushes the balls. I like how you did make it a little bit conversational. You did? Yeah, I, I, tr I tried. I tried. You a little upward there. inflection. Yeah. We'll fix it in post. It'll it'll be exactly the same tone. <laughs> Copy, paste. Uh, do you guys have shadow facts tonight? Let me just launch right in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it. Let's hear it. Do it. Do it, Chris. All right. Well, last episode, I teased the idea that John was communicating with Yom Hammer. Yes. Through yes. text message. Mm -hmm. Dial up. <laughs> yes. Dial up modem. As he sat in a stasis state <laughs> yeah. in some sort of uh, locked garage. Right. In a Denny's parking lot. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't yeah. know why it's classless. He's like in a chat room video, and it's just like a camera of Yom Hammer looking back at exactly. Him. Now, now we're going to start with a cold open, a la Lost style, Ooh, where you uh, see John. You don't know, but someone's like John. It's dinner time. And then, like, John, as a, as a boy, is like, hold on, Mom, let me finish. <laughs> and he's, like, on his, like, Commodore 64, <laughs> even though this doesn't make any sense, because, like, I guess the 80s has just been, like, three decades in this in this particular <laughs> Shadowrun sure, universe. Sure, sure. And he's, like, typing away, like, making different code keystrokes and, like, writing, to, like, making this little code. And then yeah. he, like, ent- hits enter. And then it says, like, Yom booting up. Oh, Yom version oh, 1.0. Heck. 1.0. Dude. And it's like, hello, John. Little text. We've got a C-3PO origin story. So you're saying the origin <laughs> story is that John wrote the AI to create the consciousness of Yom Hammer as yeah, a boy? Yeah, in its most basic form, and it's evolved. It. It's evolved. It may be John's oldest friend. It might be John's oldest friend. we got to hack into Yom Hammer and get, like, the <laughs> real backstory of John's hatred for this magic dude who fucked his mom. The random access <laughs> memories. Dude, I think it's funny if it's, Maybe like, magic is what made Yom Hammer... Like oh. like like short circuit or something. It's some sort of whimsical magic moment that Young actually Hammer makes him alive. sentient. <laughs> yeah, or like a weird science. I bet all of little Johnny's journal entries are like <laughs> logged in Yom Hammer's hard drive somewhere, and we can get to them. The I original bet. Yom Hammer <laughs> yeah. prototype. I love it. It's like, hold on, mom, I'm making this pod razor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Before John becomes a villain. Hold on, hold on, Mom. Yam is is downloading titties for me at one pixel row at a time. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Oh my god. I'm imagining John also like doing like the the Terminator Two, like John Connor, like ripping off ATMs. Like, come on, Dogecoin. Come on, Dogecoin. Come on, come on. Easy money. <laughs> Easy money. Cryptocurrency. Old money. Yeah. Yeah. Old money. How about you, Dan? You got a shadow fact for you, shadow punk? Yeah. Yeah, I got one. Um, So Tina, in the two months that they were apart, Tina basically only had, like, she had Bitsy and then she had the vault, but they weren't, like, great company. They were more like a chore. She had a lot of time (laughs) on her hands. She spent a lot of time tapping on her own keyboard in her apartment on Ancestry.com. She really got into it. She found uh, not a lot because, like, she was she grew up in the compound and stuff. She's only like her parents were trolls, but that's it, right? And everybody was human before that, so it's pretty unexciting. But what she did find was a direct maternal line to the hardcore legend Mick Foley of WWF fame. Oh, yeah, he was born in 1965, and he's Tina's great grandfather on her mother's side. <laughs> I love um, Mick Foley. Yeah. yeah, dude. Mick Foley's the best. He was always like hunched over, like in like electrical rooms and shit. And he had like the baseball bat with the barbed wire and shit. Quick sidebar, not to name drop, but back when Ben and I used to work together, Mick Foley was working in our building for Oh, really? I read Spike that he was TV. a writer, yeah. He looked me in the eye, we made eye contact, and I just like gave him a little nod, which I'm sure like men of a certain age, everyone <laughs> everyone knows who the fuck yeah. he is. And he yeah. and he like gave me like a little wink like back. Like he was just like he, I was. It was fucking awesome. I fucking love <laughs> McFoley growing up. Yeah, he wrestled under many different monikers. Uh, sometimes yep. in the Cactus same Jack. fucking night. Yeah, uh, you'd know him best as Mankind, mm-hmm. Cactus Jack, and of course Dude Love. Mm-hmm. And his finishing move was slipping on Sako and doing the mandible claw submission. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Uh, so Tina's really gotten into like looking up old McFoley clips on the equivalent of YouTube, whatever that is. Twenty fifty three. Shadow run. It was just a troll commune for a long time. I was expecting it to be called Incestry.com. <laughs> 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 oh, sick troll burn. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Thank you, guys. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty. That's some deep shit right there. You both very deep cuts into your character's past. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get this tonight started. We'll get uh, you guys into the world. How about that? You guys wake up in Snohomish. Snohomish. Which is what it's called. That's just what you it's figured called. figured it out? You figured no, it out? No, that's just what I'm calling it. Okay, okay. <laughs> 
mostly countryside. It was very rural, a lot of farmland, as we yeah. discussed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys went up to John's Uncle Bert, yeah. who yes, is did. a stoner computer genius uh, who taught John everything he knows about computer systems. About coding AI Yom Hammer. Mm-hmm. Well, antiquated knowledge, but still useful knowledge. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the kind of computers he was used to, they were from like the 2030s. <laughs> and so John knows how to do like old school hacking, which I think is awesome. Exactly. And you guys brought the, the vault with you, who kind of hijacked your night out in the town in the van. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a very fucking tense moment where you guys defused the bomb in his head, which was almost the end of this podcast. Dude, I... Episode two this season, when we were in the fucking octagon, like, I had a lot of worrisome points where I was like, we might die. Oh, yeah. But not nearly as much as, like, yeah. defusing that bomb. I was like, <laughs> we're fucking dead. Like, we're going to blow the fuck out of this house and we're dead. Yeah. Like, that's it. I was so fucking worried. I agree. The typical cortex bomb that's in the book it explodes to, like, a three meter radius. But I just wanted to up the ante. Yeah, why not? And I just thought that was awesome. 22,000 square feet. Your guys' yeah. spaces. Oh, so oh, so shit. it didn't need to be that fucking hard, is what you're saying. It didn't need to be that hard, but I figure the vault is a. He's up at the top. He had some fucking sensitive information. You wanted yeah. us to. You were you were you were you were testing. I mean, us. I mean, two thousand square feet. That's like fifty feet by fifty feet. It's not ridiculously huge, but it's definitely beyond the footprint of that house. Right. Like we were we were gonna fucking die. Yeah, you're taking yeah. out anybody yeah. who could possibly have received yeah. that info. Anybody in a twenty five foot radius is dead. I feel yeah. like we were. All, I was exhausted after that moment. I was like, literally, like, <laughs> you know, fuck it. Sometimes you just gotta roll the fucking. You like dice. to fucking roll the I dice agree. for sure. I agree. So you guys diffused this bomb in a very tense moment. You got the data out of mm-hmm. the vault's head discovered that it was fake sins or fake identities for people. Yeah. There must have been some name on this list that someone doesn't want to get out. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So you guys wake up now. You're in Bert's house. And it's drafty. It's an old farmhouse. Yeah. Single level ranch style home. Yeah. Not fancy at all. Fucking paper, like cardboard thin like carpet. Yes. That like shag carpet that's like three decades old. Crusty 30 year old carpet. (laughs) Yeah. 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 You guys wake up and you're like, you can tell me where you guys slept. You guys got high as fuck. Passed out. It's about 11 a.m. You wake up in this house. You vaguely remember that you told the vault to get the fuck out, and he went to the van. He's probably, presumably asleep in there. Yeah. You see uh, Fawn already up, and she's like, she's making eggs in the kitchen. You can hear, like, pans, you know, moved around in the kitchen. I want to say that Tina kind of wakes up to the clanking of the pans, and she just sprawled because she's giant, right? So she's completely spilling over the edges of the uh, the hideaway fold-out sofa <laughs> bed in the living room, and Bert's, like, still asleep, like, nestled in her arm. Like on her chest, like, and they're just like they've got like some like just burned down to the butts cannolis that you know still in Tina's finger, and she's just kind of like groggy and waking up uh, to the sounds of fawn with bird on her chest. I love it. If you remember, John fell asleep in a chair and started having fitful v- <laughs> Vietnam right. two. I was gonna say Vietnam <laughs> two flashback dreams. I feel like I already told people where John slept. You were in a chair, and you were you were calling Tina Walker by the end of that last night. <laughs> He still wakes up in that chair and he's just... John wakes up like, oh! (laughs) Sweaty. He wakes up sweaty. You have like the fucking... You have the black pajamas on still. Just just cold from sweat. This is like the first time John's taken drugs in a long time too. So it's like... He's going to act like nothing happened though. John, you wake up in your chair and you're just soaked with sweat and just like you smell like stale marijuana. Like, yeah. Just obs- you got the marijuana farts, man. You yeah. know the marijuana farts? And like thick. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> No, no, I'm trying to. I struggle to relate to I, that. I, I, like, if you don't inhale properly into your lungs and it gets into your stomach, and you like, you get like the marijuana. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were talking about like you're like you can inhale it and it comes out. No, uh, the, the French inhale out of my asshole. Part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, wait, what? I, I. Uh, yeah, I, love I just that you think get, it's like, funny if Dad thinks that's how the human body works. He's like, you know, when you like breathe in and then you like fart, <laughs> and you shit it out. Yeah, you get wine burps and marijuana farts. I breathe out of my asshole. <laughs> I can hold my breath so long. Um, <laughs> just as uh, long as Dad's ass is out of the water, he's like still breathing, like a, <laughs> like a turtle. It's like, it's like a rebreather. Yeah. It's like circulates it for a while. I love it. <laughs> uh, I can't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> that image was too strong and powerful. I do. My, I will say when I sweat after I have marijuana, it's like it's like oilier. It's like thicker. 
Really? Uh, I, yeah, I'm, you're definitely... You're yeah. like Moist Larry. I'm like Moist Larry. I, I wake up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Yeah, you wake up in your chair, John, and you feel you get a call in your fucking sub-vocals, and you can see that it's, uh, okay. it's Leah Bradshaw. Oh, hell yeah. Leah time. And you see that there's like there's like 15 missed calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Again? John's even contemplating, like... Ugh. Like he wants to get like a cup of coffee and like a fucking shot of the hair of the dog, like some whiskey <laughs> right, or right. something that doesn't want to pick this up. But he like just on the last ring answers reluctantly. Yeah. Like you're smelling the eggs getting cooked over there on the kitchen. Like you can't quite yeah, focus. The fucking fresh duck eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Mallard. Mallard. Yeah, I just want to, I, I, I actually have an experience where I went to Seattle recently and hung out with these hippie people who are awesome. Them, but like we had like breakfast with with the duck, duck eggs, duck really? egg breakfast sandwich. Yeah, and it just made me laugh. It's just hippie. Never had duck eggs in my life. I know it's a thing. But. They're fine. They're they're good. That's I so mean. decadent. Egg. It's so funny. Anyway, yeah, he's uh he answers the phone groggy, reluctantly. Like, Hello, is this jo- John? Uh, yeah. Oh. You, uh, this is John speaking. Are, are you? Is everything okay? I've been trying to call you all morning. We're supposed to meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just had a wild night. Um, you sound awful. Yeah, yeah. No, we're good. Everything's fine here. We're all fine here. Okay. <laughs> How are you? And you can hear her voice is like shakier than usual and not even like in anger or anything at you. She's definitely a little annoyed with you because she's been trying yeah. to call you, but you can sense something's also wrong. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can. Where are you right now? Are you able to get to the mainframe soon? Or I have I have some new information and it's it's pretty. I just need to. I need to. We need to meet. Um, uh, we can be there. We can be there soon. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a couple hours from the mainframe. I know. I just think it's funny to. I think it's funny to promise. Uh, like you're realizing. I did not know. Like your boss calls you and like you're like, yeah, sure, I can get that work done that I was supposed to do last <laughs> night in an hour. We weren't supposed to meet until two, though. We weren't supposed to meet until two. Oh, it was two p.m. You're right. So you guys could make it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We just drive like okay. a fucking road trip. Like <laughs> take the duck egg breakfast sandwiches to go. Yeah, duck egg breakfast. Duck egg breakfast. I going. forgot about two p.m. You're right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So she, she's just like, all right, I'll see you there. And she just hangs up the phone fuck uh <laughs> fuck <laughs> tina john tina we gotta we gotta get to the mainframe by 2 p.m john hat shit man you look better you okay i need a sandwich and a coffee and we need to get the fuck on the road all right all right just give me shit bert hey bert bert, uh, bert uh, just uh, oh bert. Hey, hey 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 morning sleepy heads how you guys yeah. and bert looks so refreshed <laughs> and he's just like oh Ah, uh, Fawn, are you making, what are you making over there? I'm making chilaquiles. Chilaquiles. And she's mixing like salsa in with some chips and she's cooking it all together. You guys like chilaquiles? Tina just shoots off that fucking hideaway bed and scurries over to a, the kitchen table and plops down. I fucking love chilaquiles. <laughs> it's her favorite fucking food. We don't have time for chilaquiles. John, all we right? always have time for chilaquiles. We don't have time for chilaquiles or horchata or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I want the horchata to go. Tina turns to, to Fosh. Like, I, I have time for Chiriculus. Are they ready? Listen, I love you guys. I appreciate what you did for us last night, but we got another run. John's going to put a little envelope down that he's going to tuck like behind like a cork board, oh. like at their place, like just, you know, with a, with a full cash. Oh. But he, do, he knows that they won't accept it. But right. he's like puts it behind their little, you know, where they put mail and bills and yeah. old people stuff. The John allowance. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah he's, he knows they wouldn't take it, but he knows they need it. Fawn is kind of sensing the urgency here. And she's like, I got you, honey. She winks at you. And she takes the whole <laughs> yeah. pot and just like fucking takes it all off the stove and just gives you the fucking like pot holders. Like just hand, hands them to you, Tina, to take with you. So careful. That's real hot. I got it. Thank you so much, Fawn. You've been a wonderful <laughs> host. Keep the pot. I've never felt felt so welcome in a stranger's home. This has been <laughs> fantastic. You guys, because you should look into a bed and breakfast. It's really a burgeoning <laughs> business. I, you guys really got something here. I and told these you, These smell 
on point. How big, like, is the scale of, like, Fawns handing the pot? Like, I imagine, like, Gandalf with hobbits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She hands this giant stew pot, and, like, then Dan picks it up, and it's like a coffee cup. <laughs> yeah, Tina, it looks like a fucking, like, porridge bowl that she's just kind of got with the little pot holders. <laughs> Tina just kind of puts the, the pot holders down because her dermal plating on her hands is just like, fuck it. And she, like, picks up the pot in one fucking hand, mm-hmm. and she just kind of, like, tucks it in close to her to her ribs, and she just says, fun. Bert, you feel like family. I can't wait to do this again. Here's my number. She pulls out a lady T card, hands it to them both. Hit me up anytime. Bert's eyes get wide when he looks at the card. It's just like, <laughs> it looks suggestive, kind of. We'll definitely be back soon. We'll be back. John Boy, come over here. Come over here. And he walks over to give you just a great big old hug. And he's like, thanks for the cannolis. And he's just patting you on the back. And it's good seeing you. And he hasn't seen you in so long. And he's just like, keep in touch. I mean, come on. You got to keep your address current. I, I was sending you all those. I, who knows where those last magazines were going? I don't know who I they d- were going I definitely to. will. Clearly, some of my influence rubbed off. You and your, your friend here. Um, it looks promising. <laughs> what? And he squeezes your shoulder. And he's like, good work, John. I'm proud of you, boy. What do you think's going on here? <laughs> And he looks at Tina and just winks. Tina doesn't even notice because she's like dumping the pot of chilaquiles into her mouth. <laughs> she's just like fucking downing him right now. All right. Uh, yeah, it's good to see you too. Um, we're going to hit the road. You go walk over to your fucking sick new van that Tina bought for you and the vault is just curled up in the back. He's completely fucking passed out. Like he's obviously alive. So we're, he's going to wake up like mid uh, road trip, <laughs> like like a classic. He's sleeping like a fucking baby. He got fucked up. If you guys don't remember, he rolled. His I do roll, remember. He did not stage any of that down. It fucked him up. Let's ride. We fucking rip. Okay, so I want to do something real quick, but since we're in route, it won't take long. As we're driving in the van, John's taking us down the road. We got two, three hours, whatever, to get to the mainframe. Bert downloaded some of that data for John. Where is that at? Okay, he's got a couple, like, optical discs. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. John, can you hit me up with one of those discs real quick? I just want to take a peek. John's going to, like, take it out of his pocket, put it in his teeth as he's, like, taking a big turn, yeah. shift the car and everything, and then he, like, flings it back to you. Hell yeah. They're on the fly. They're improvising. Yeah, we're on the fly. We're on the fucking fly. Tina grabs it with a pair of fingers <laughs> and just inserts it <laughs> into the uh, disk drive into uh, the computer console in the van pulls that thing up and she's gonna try she could obviously just see the data yeah maybe this is stupid because she has an electronic skill this probably doesn't apply to any of that right um no if you're looking for anything specific it'll help your target number a little bit okay she comes up and slides into the front seat next to john she's looking at the display console in front of them and starts looking at all of these names that are scrolling across the screen and she's just kind of taking a closer look uh, I was thinking I'd roll an electronic skill, but I don't think that would do anything for me here. So it might just be like an observation intelligence roll or something yeah. like that. Uh, three dice. And I'm just going to see what Tina sees on this list. If anything sticks out, if anything looks weird, if anything okay. looks fishy yep. about the, like some of the data is redacted, as you said, or corrupted. So mm-hmm. you can't see all the names. I'm going to say target number five because a it's six, a four and a five. Nice. Two successes. You're not super trained in spotting anything to do with this kind of information, but you're looking at it and you're kind of impressed. Like you probably you've seen some fake identities because of what you're yeah you're, with your profession at night. People probably try yeah. to use them on you. You've seen some really hilariously fake ones, and yeah. you've seen some pretty good yeah. ones. Yeah, Tina's seen this it. This shit yep. looks legit. Possibly the best you've ever seen. Not just fake identities, but possibly even real identities okay. of deceased people gotcha. um, recycled into into circulation. You can see th- there's a few of them, obviously, like I said, they're corrupted because Bert didn't roll high enough to get all of the information, but he got almost all of it. It's like 95% does, does Tina of it. Does see any names that she would know from pop culture, something more famous or wealthy or something like that, like a name that she recognizes for whatever reason? Nothing that... Pops out to her. Okay. It's alphabetical. How many names are there? How many names are on this list? Thousands. Thousands? Okay. And it's almost like you're just kind of looking at it and you're, you're realizing how much money that this thing is worth because- Okay, it's a lot. It's a lot of like fucking premium identities. Can I ask you how much it is worth? Or would Tina know? No. But a lot. You would know it's a lot. So we're talking tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, new yen. Here, yes. Probably. Yeah. John, this looks fucking loaded, man. This thing's fucking ripe, dude. This thing's fucking... She's just going to go through every little... <laughs> I want you to send... Tina. Yeah? Send one of those names on a message to Zupa. Okay. And just be like, we hacked the vault. You're dealing with us now. Call us, like, for the when and where. 
Zupa did say in season one that he wanted to work with us again. Do we have his contact info? Yes. Okay, she pulls it up on her arm console, taps through, and locates Zupa's contact number, types in one of the non-corrupted names, all of the info, copies that as an attachment, and says, Zupa... This is Tina. Are we, do I want to say Tina and John? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do we call ourselves? You guys have a team name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. I know, it's just sick. like, what are, who are we? Yeah. I mean, it's like, Zupa, this is Tina and John. We've got the knock list. That's exactly what she says. We've got the knock list. The vault doesn't have possession of it anymore. He's of no consequence, if you know what I mean, winky face. If you want to meet up sometime and exchange, maybe we could make a sale. Oh. Heart eyes... Smiley face. <laughs> Thirst emoji. The most confusing text. <laughs> Send. I just, as soon as we get back to, to like Seattle, I just want to open the van doors on any random street corner, like push the vault out of it with like a duck egg <laughs> sandwich and a coffee and just be like, you're free. I love it. He's like, oh, what the fuck? Oh, oh. You just like sit him down on the ground like, see ya. And just, uh, and peel out. Before you peel out, Tina just says, head back to the apartment. Hang there if you need anything. I'll catch up with you later, bud. Okay. I love it. You had a chance to let the vault gone from your life. And you <laughs> did fucking take Tina's it. Tina's not going to kick him to the curb, man. Tina can't kick anyone to the curb. I love no it. No way. You see Zupa, like you're kind of staring at your wrist screen. Yeah. And you see like the dot, dot, dot of like him typing. And then it goes away. And then it goes <laughs> And you see him typing again. And it goes away. And then it, you get no text back right now. You're just like, this is, he's not how to respond yet. <laughs> Probably talking to some people, probably freaking the fuck out a little bit. That's hilarious. Yeah, you guys make it down into downtown now, and, the, you know, the traffic's heavy. It's a, uh, you're like right in time. It's about 155 ish when you pull into one of the parallel parking spots right yeah. in front of uh, the nav system on the John Mobile is just spot on. We pull in like Ace Ventura, like power <laughs> slide into the, into the space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, utilizing the AI grid guide a little bit to help you fucking like between traffic slide into the spot. <laughs> and yeah, you guys walk into the broken double doors that act almost like fucking saloon doors as you yeah. pull that sucker open. And the bar is dead as usual, but uh, still got some music thumping and you see Leah Bradshaw, and she's in some cut-off Daisy Dukes. Oof. Her hair's a different color now. It's like lime green, but still got the shaved side. And Millie's just finished serving her one of his only beverages, which is beer or Zima. It's a it's a beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's back behind the bar. Tina's huge as she ducks in under the doors to come into this place. I say, oi, oi, Tina Joan, hey, I, 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 Leah, hey, here you go. I, I, told you, I told you they'd show. They're part of my team, like I said. We're professionals. We don't stand anyone up. Uh, are we late? Exactly my point. I want John to say that. <laughs> I want John to say that like an asshole. <laughs> You're so good at making him feel five inches tall. And he, he grabs us. We're freelancers here. We don't work just for you. Excuse me, Bradshaw. Right. No, this is a big deal. You're a big deal. You're, we have other clients. Uh, you need a drink? Yes. The usual, John? Usual. Hit me. Tina's already slipped behind the bar. She's so used to bar backing for Millie at this point <laughs> that she's like, uh, just kind of assumed the role of she's back at work. And she starts, uh, would you order, John, a beer? Jen Martini for, for John. She yells that to Tina. Not in this dump. <laughs> John, I got you, bud. I like I can make something uh, nice and filtered I'm gonna, anything, for you. I, I'm going to order anything bottled. <laughs> I don't care. What, John doesn't drink beer, but he's not letting any any room for error. When you're in a shit bar, you order a bottled beer. I got you. I understand. She kind of makes eye contact with Leia real quick, and she because she used to work a bar with Leia, and mm -hmm. uh, Leia Bear. Uh, almost like she might have like lost her chops a little bit, like she's out of practice and remembering why their bar shut down in the first place because all those people got sick and uh, she opens up the cooler and pulls out a beer for John with a bottle cracks it but she also pulls out a chilled mug from the ice chest because you know John's her boy. Yeah. She fills up John and ice. And he flourishes? She trying to show off at all? What are you trying to do? She pulls out a lime and she doesn't cut it. She just fucking crushes it in her palm and squirts that fucking lime right into the fucking oh, glass. Okay. And lets it dribble uh, and down. She winks at Bradshaw. She doesn't wink. She doesn't <laughs> wink, but she does look. <laughs> Some she weird does, like innuendo. Like she <laughs> does look at her. She just fucking pulverizes that lime and I it could drops. Juice you. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> drops the juice carcass of a lime into the beer and slides it over to John, mm -hmm. leans over on the bar with her elbows in just to get a little closer to Millie and Leah and hear what's up. She's sitting there and she's not really touching her drink. She's like, Millie, can we uh, 
You got any place a little more private? He's like, oh, rot, rot, rot. He's like, we'll go to the, the suite, the special suite. Take it, you got the keys. <laughs> Yeah, I got him. <laughs> and she reaches underneath the bar right next to the sawed-off shotgun with a little pair of keys on a hook right there and takes him out. Says, follow me. The teeniest, tiniest little keychain in Tina's fingers, like a little, like an actual normal size keychain in her huge hands. Yeah. Uh, and you walk around, like right behind the bar, there's sort of like a little storage room. It says uh, employees only. And you unlock the store and walk in. And it's just a small little room, but there's a tiny table in the middle and five chairs. The walls are kind of like vinyl and he closes the door up and he's like no one is gonna hear this outside this door i'll be i'll be right outside if you need me take me come get me someone can flag me down but i'll be right out here and he closes the door but we're not getting the sense that it's a perfect soundproof <laughs> uh you, you can trust millie as much as you would like somebody has a white noise machine oh yeah the white noise machine yeah let's do that or can i just turn that on or i have to roll for it no you can turn that on that'd be so john to ronald reagan be like <laughs> trust but verify <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's like one of his heroes. And try, and switch on the white noise machine. At first, it's pretty dissonant sound in all of you guys' ears. You kind of feel your ears pop as the sound kind of intr- penetrates your skull. And then all of a sudden, like, it all kind of hums into the background and you guys can hear each other perfectly. But you feel secure. Like, no one's going to be able to hear or bug this conversation. And she kind of relaxes a little bit, but she still looks kind of sad. And she's like, okay, I'm just going to get right to the chase here. My brother... And she looks at Tina. She's like, Thorber. Yeah. You, you know, he went missing. In the meantime, while you guys were resting up and getting healed and looked after. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is funny to remember. <laughs> what you guys have been through the last couple of weeks. <laughs> so great. Yeah. While you guys were healing up, um, I had Millie contract out a Decker to help me hunt down some information. And um, I got some pretty fucked up news. Oh, Leaper. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I shouldn't call you that. I, I'm sorry. Sure, forget I said Leia. I'm so sorry. She kind of looks at you, Tina, and pain in her eyes, but she understands that you didn't mean anything. You're just, you care for her, and she knows that. You know, I never met him. I know. We, we, but I, and she looks at John apologetically. She's like, I'm sorry. I know this is a lot of insider talk. But here. I'm going to meet him. Leia. John's going to act like he wasn't paying attention. I'm like, oh, sorry, what? <laughs> But he was. Oh. We're going to meet him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll start at the beginning. I, My brother and I, we grew up together. He's adopted. He's a dwarf. Okay. My parents were metahuman sympathizers and, and activists. And one day my father was at one of the metahuman rallies and um, it went bad and he didn't come home. And my mom kind of fell apart. She fell into Simpsons. She started using heavily pretty soon. She got into Beatles, and we just never saw from her again. I mean, why would she come back to this life if she could live someone else's, right? And she kind of looks at you with some disdain now, Tina. Oh. Maybe there's some baggage there that John doesn't know about. Because Tina's into Beatles. Yeah. I want John to actually be listening. Like, that's his one sign of showing any respect to the better humans, anything. He's, he's listening. He's listening. <laughs> Tina's social cues are low, but this does hit home, and she just kind of looks down at her hands. So it was up to Thorbor and I to raise ourselves, and um, we had two different ideas of that. Me, I knew computers well. I started decking. I started getting jobs, and pretty soon I ran in the shadows in Portland, and that's where I learned everything I know and met some of the most important people in my life. She looks at you again, Tina, for just a second. Thorber had a different idea. Like, I-, I knew we needed money, but he didn't agree with my approach. Idealist little fuck. And he would just tell me that I was, you know, I was treating the symptoms and not the disease. Mm. Yeah, I taught him everything I knew about computers, and he was using that to figure out some cure for beetle use. Cure for beetle use? I guess he did. The information we dug up... Shit. He started a company here in Seattle called Kickchip, apparently. He figured out some way of curing beetle use. Fuck. I ran the, the address a week ago. It was shot up. I don't know if he's alive, but I need you guys to go there and, and check it out. You just go in? If you could go to the kick chip office and see what you could find, I, I'm worried that, that I'm being watched. Understood. Yeah, she, she wants to say more, but you can tell it's hard. Leia, look at me. Look, look at me. You said it was shot up. Is this office still functional or is it abandoned? You're like, if it's abandoned, maybe I could set up a new hideout there. <laughs> <laughs> those are my favorite. <laughs> According to the rule book, those are my favorite places to inhabit. <laughs> she kind of, you can see her eyes start to well up with tears a bit. And she's like, I mean, from the pictures I saw, I don't, I don't think so. This is good. She slides a, a chip across the room that you can put into your wrist computer. Tina grabs it, slots it, and uh, pulls up her uh, wrist console. Takes a look. You can see the front of this building, and I mean, it, it's 
been completely rattled with gunfire. The windows are blown out, fucking blood on the concrete outside the building and shit. Like it looks ru- looks like a bomb went off in it. Too. And this is the building where Thorber worked, right? This was his company. How many people died? No one survived. The list of casualties was around 25. Was he there when it happened? According to the scream sheets, yeah. And, and Tina, you're starting to piece things together. Yeah. She has a data jack on the side of her head, but it's like scorched. Yeah. Like burned out. You knew her as a Decker. That's what she did. Yeah. And she keeps talking about this Decker that she well, hired. That's so I was wondering. Why did she hire somebody? Well, the Decker that I contracted out, he, he was looking on the Shadowlands to see if there's any chatter or anything. And the only thing he was able to find was that the Yakuza was taking responsibility for the attack. Okay. Was your brother reported dead or missing? Dead. And she, she says that kind of, she can barely get it out. She's like, have you seen the body? Uh, no. Where's the body, Leia? Where's the body? The only reason I'm looking for him was that a few weeks ago, he'd messaged me something weird. I knew it was him and he sounded like he was in trouble. Okay. But it, hey, I, there's no body. I wasn't contacted. My mother's still alive. She wasn't contacted. Something's up. Sounds like we got a new run. She looks you dead in the eyes, Tina. She goes, I need to know. I need to know for sure. Leia, this is my boy John. If your brother's alive, we're going to fucking find him. You've got my word. This isn't a revenge mission, right? Like, we're trying to find this guy. Yeah, she she hired you to find him before she got this news that this building was shot up. So who's this guy that you got looking into this? Who's this Decker? It's a Decker that Millie hooked me up with. His name's Sosu. So you got any information for us? We're just going in and checking this building? What else we got? I just got the address to the building, but I can have him look into some more stuff if you need. Anything he's got, have him send it our way. I'll let him know. Are you guys able to get out there immediately? We're on it. She kind of fondles the bottle in front of her a little bit more, kind of just just messing with it. She still hasn't drank it. Thanks. No problem. Dina reaches over and twist tops that thing off. It's not a twist off, but she twists it off anyway. Twists off the entire glass neck. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if we both go forward and we like bump into each other. Roll me a quickness. Roll me a quickness. Roll to me a see quickness. Who slowly <laughs> reaches out right, wait, to grab that How many dice again? Six? You've got a lot of quickness, Whatever dude. your quickness is. Oh, yeah. I've got okay. five quickness. Tina, your target number is three. John, your oh, target I... number is five because it's Ooh. Tina's reach. Oh, that's right. She's got those long arms. we got to remember to implement that all the time. All right. Tina's got five quickness. Here it comes. Not great. What's my target? Three. And John, yours is five. Three, four, four. Three successes. Yeah, John has a quickness of seven, dude. <laughs> five. I'm going to make a little area for my dice rolls. This here. is uh, wired reflexes. Three successes. Oh! And what did you get, tie. Tina? I got three successes. Three. John wins because his quickness is higher. So he, uh, with the tie, yeah, it's the tiebreaker. Sneaks right so, yeah, in there. So, yeah, Tina, you reach for it. Like, I want us to bump elbow, like, bump, like, shoulders. Like, <laughs> and, like, yeah. I grab it and just, just before, and, like, <laughs> click it open with my bionic and arm. And Tina just tries to, like, do something with her hand to make it look like she wasn't reaching for the bottle, but it's just very awkward. Right, yeah, like, she, comb she, it not through your hair. Yeah, like, like breaks yeah. it back and, like, wipes the oil <laughs> off her forehead. Yeah. And Leah kind of smirks at the two of you. Like, it, it kind of... <laughs> it's stupid. It lightens the moment it a little bit. It tips the then hand you... that when they both still are want to fuck her. Yeah, <laughs> they've got something vested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And she's just like, "Thanks, guys." Gets up and walks into the bar, and you can see that she starts to call up uh, So Sue on her phone. She's playing us like a fiddle. Can I can I try and slip a Lady T card into like her <laughs> back pocket without her yeah. knowing? Because I don't know if she has my contact info anymore, so Tina's just gonna like try and slip uh, her phone number in there. Just Lady to... T. Where's the Where's the skill? Web? She's cool with just John having the contact with Leia Bear, but I think it's funny if this is what breaks up like Tina and John again. again. <laughs> <laughs> Episode four, they they hate each other yeah, again. Exactly. Tina's got nothing vested. She just wants to be there for Leia, and okay. so if she needs to get it in contact with her, she wants her to have it. All right. Sure, so what's sure. your quickness? Five. Quickness is five. Target number eight because uh, it's, it's two pips to get to stealth. You don't have a stealth okay, skill. Yeah. Target number eight. Gotta get some sixes here. Dropped one on the floor. Three fives, no sixes. Yeah, your hand like fucking gropes her ass as you're trying to get it, <laughs> trying to get it into her pocket. It gropes uh-huh. her ass. And I want John to kind of look at it and be like, what the <laughs> fuck? No, <laughs> you gotta see no! t- you gotta see Dan's face right now. He's covering his face. I don't want to grope her with her missing brother. And she shoots. She shoots a steely stare at you, Tina. And she just, oh, sorry. No, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. <laughs> I want John to just, like, look away. Like, I'm, 
I'm sorry. I just wanted to get you to have like it's it's rare that John gets to be the one not making a faux pas. I just wanted you to have this. Wow. I promise. Wow. And she hands her. Do the... dead brothers turn you on? What the fuck? Yeah. No. Like, <laughs> wow. Me too. I wanted you to be able to get in contact with me <laughs> if you needed to. If you couldn't contact, you know what? Forget it. You just give John a call if you need anything. I'm here to help John and to help she you. She sees the tiny card. Tina takes the card and slips it back into her pocket. Yeah, she sees the tiny card in your fingers, and she see her like severe stare, kind of soften a little bit because she's she knows Tina too. Like she knows she's a fucking bumbling. <laughs> like that she probably was trying to do that. She's just kind of like she just shakes her head and walks off. She's like, yeah, we'll be in touch, and she just walks off. Fuck. Fuck. Dan, your face. Fuck. Dan's face. Tina's just standing there with the card in her fingers, just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you guys. Smooth, X Lax. Tina turns to John, she's like, <laughs> fuck, I am so sorry for that. <laughs> Takes the card and puts it back in her pocket and just says, smooth move, X Lax. You lead the <laughs> way, John. Where are we going? You walk out into the main bar and um, you see her on the phone with somebody as you guys walk out through the doors again, back into your van and uh, head to this address. And you can see that this address was actually <laughs> halfway between where you guys just came from, which is fuck. Funny. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It's past where you came from. I think it's funny from. if we pass the vault, like still like <laughs> on the street. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he pulls us over. He wants to get like back in. He's like got his thumb up. He's hitchhiking or some shit. I'm like, fuck. Like, we have to pick him up again. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> God damn it. You just splash a huge puddle on him. Like, just splash Are we him. stopping or are we not? We're not. No, no. Keep driving. Keep driving. You just, you blow by, but he, like, turns, like, right before the light. He sees him, like, three lights ahead. He, like, turns down a side street. You kind of see a moment where he kind of maybe recognizes and you're already gone. <laughs> hey, everybody. My name is Jeff and I run the Big Campaign Stories podcast. Our story focuses on four people working at a repo company, trying to keep afloat among a corporate dystopia and crushing debt. The world is one that we have been playing in and working on for a long time. The current homebrew setting is played with Pathfinder first edition rules, but with more of a modern feel to it. Think something like Blade Runner or Snow Crash, but with magic. Uh, we try to release every Thursday, and when we cannot, we come up with small side episodes focusing on each character to help expand the world and lore. So, if you like greasy breakfasts, people trying to pay bills, and the occasional Lovecraftian monster, give us a listen. All right, thanks. You guys drive up through the panhandle of Snohomish and up through into Everett, which is north of Snohomish, actually. Okay. Northernmost area in the Seattle Metroplex area. Drive up to Silver Lake which you can see is sort of this kind of like up and coming sort of like tech business boom looks like it's happening and you pull up to the address where a kick chip building was and you can see right across the street was actually you can see it's like one of those like areas where it, you could tell it used to be sort of like industrial and it's yeah. been gentrified and gotten like kind of hipper and cooler as like more money move into the area there's a gas station across the street an old gas station called the come and split Someone has spray painted the L out, so it just looks like cum and spit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little old gas station with weeds growing up around the pump stations. And the building you're looking at, the kick chip office, has like fucking police tape taped across the fucking front door and it's boarded up in the windows that's been blown out and shit. But there's like still glass on the sidewalk outside and it looks like a crime scene that's been of like a week old. He's going to drive past it a little bit to one of the vacant buildings next door. Okay. He's going to pull around back and he's going to be like, if I know anything from my corporate cleanup crew days, if we didn't find what we needed, we'd be back again. See if any rats turn up. Mmm, smooth. Good call, John. I think we need to go to that come and spit <laughs> and get some materials and some food, some uh, chilaquiles. Chilaquiles. I still got the pot. I have an old-fashioned steakhouse. Oh. I like it, John. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you guys walk. I guess you park separately, right? You probably park not at the gas There's station. There's like a building to the south. Is that vacant? On the east side, there's the kick chip office. And to the south of the kick chip office is the abandoned building. On the west side of the highway is the come and spit. I think we should pull into the abandoned building, see if we can find a stakeout spot. And then like some one of us goes to come and spit to grab some fucking... So what, Tina's going to hang out in the abandoned building? I, I think you should go into that abandoned building, see if you can get like a... Get out of the van, see if you can find like a place to watch. Okay. You know, yeah. Binocular no, totally. style. Hell yeah. Let's do it. 
Let's fucking do it. And John's gonna go to the coming split. What John kind of wanted to further explain, he's like, I bet this building is being watched. Right on. If they didn't right. find what they needed, they might think, you know, someone's either trying to pick up the trail or try to, you know, they just, it, John just wants to make sure that he's not walking into anything before we go into that building. Johnny boy. Johnny's got a sixth sense. Clever, clever Johnny boy. Sick. John, what you can see is you're, you're walking across the highway there. You're doing a good job staying inconspicuous, not looking like you have any real goal in mind. You're just kind of meandering toward the gas station. And I look like shit. Like, normally John looks good, but he blends in with the... You look like a fucking shadow runner, John. You're all yeah. greasy because of stale sweat that dried right. on you, your hair. You look like a perfect right. hipster. I look like I should be in that area. Like, maybe new money, business. Perfect. As you're walking toward the coming split, you're just seeing the fucking devastation to this building. Like, it just looks fucking riddled. I'm with getting a second little viewpoint of it. The police have done a, as good a job as they can of, like, patching up the windows, but they're, like, floor-to-ceiling windows, and they're all blown out, and they put, like police tape across all of them and you can see the front door is uh, sort of in this frame of cement and there's bullet impacts up at the top left of that frame where a, a security camera was and it's completely shot out. I'm like, those shots are too precise for, <laughs> for Yakuza. I'm like, that's Megacorp like blasters. <laughs> dude, roll, roll for it, dude. Roll for it. Yeah, roll can, for I, it. Can, I, can I see a perception to see if I think yeah, this is like a Yeah, roll me a perception. Corp? Okay. Roll me a perception and use your, um, yeah, use your corporate etiquette. Whatever. I would say yeah. this is something that you would know. That's a corporate talent. A corporate etiquette is four. Target number, I'm going to say five because this is a challenging thing to discern. You're looking at the shot pattern. One success. You're all the way across the street, so you're not actually able to see anything close about like what the bullet impacts. You're not able to look at any shells and see what weapons they use or anything. But you do see something curious. You see motorcycle tires. Okay. Just black marks that look like someone tore out of that place fast. And it looks like something that would be on like a crotch rocket, which is in line with what the Yakuza usually drive. Okay. So yeah, you walk into the come and split. It's a real fucking rundown joint. It looks more there for novelty at this point. And there's sort of an old timer there. It looks like he's maybe been in this area a long time. He's behind the counter and he looks just completely uninterested in I'm going to get a tall or... boy of PBRs. A couple of tall boys. Perfect. And brown bags. Right in character. A couple of coffees. Mm-hmm. Soy caps. I'm going to get some like Cliff Bar, like soy protein. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some just Asian like takeout, lo mein. Like, you know, because that's a stakeout. You got to have some lo mein noodles, Chinese food yeah, when, you're sure. on a, when you're on a 70s Hell cop yeah, dude. steakhouse. Some gas station, <laughs> some come and split. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> of course. And he's wearing, like, a fucking spooge visor and, <laughs> and jacket. Like, spooge sponsored. Like, it's got, like, try a spooge or whatever all this shit. Busy you. He's, like, maybe looks like he's, like, 60 and he's wearing this shit. He's just, like, fucking looks dead inside as he's looking at you. <laughs> Off the top of his head, he knows what a PBR, what the price is for that tall boys. Is he, <laughs> people buy them all the time. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 ringing them all up. Tina calls up John on, on his sub vocal real quick. Jack. John, we got any slush puppies in there? Yeah, what else you want? Some cowtails? Slim Jims? Uh, can I get some uh, replacement pork rinds? I like a slush puppy. And uh, any sort of gummies you can find. You got it. Thanks, John. No problem, Tina. <laughs> Okay, you want some soy rinds? You need some. I just want John to have like had that blank stare when he's on the sub boat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you, son. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to supersize that slush puppy for 39 extra cents? Yes, I do. Supersize it and bag it. <laughs> bag it. Bag it and tag it. He, he just exhales. He's just so fucking over it. He walks over and fills up this like comically large fucking like cup full all the way to the top of the shit. <laughs> Sets it down and gives you a bag. I picture like, oh. you using those gross fizzy goo sounds that everyone hates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, thank you for reminding me. Yes, I'm going to pack this full. Pack their sweet cheeks. With fucking fizzy goose sounds. Fizzy goose slash puppy. He pulls the handle and a thick, <laughs> a thick jet of fizzy goo squirts out and farts out of the spink sphincter. <laughs> <laughs> fucking thick ropes of, of fizzy goo, thick ropes of fizzy goo spooge out into this cup. Pile on itself like cat shit. <laughs> That's so Another gross. callback. And uh, yeah, he, he hands up, he's like, it'll be 35 million. Yeah, whatever. 
<laughs> <laughs> he has a, a card. That's so perfectly in can character. I say, can I say, when you're ordering shit food at a convenience store, it could cost $400. So yeah. You don't care. <laughs> yeah, you would you're, not you're, be getting, you're going in there and you're ordering everything like you're a high roller at like Vegas, like bringing yeah. it on the table. You're just buying it. You're buying right. it. Whatever it's a necessity. the cost. <laughs> right, right. He rings you up and hands you the bags. I mean, it's like you have so much shit. It's like two huge fucking bags. John's gonna say something as as the guy is paying. He's gonna be like, "What happened over there?" For the first time, something you pique his interest a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, those are them yaks, mm-hmm. yakuzas, hot shots across the street. Thought they were bigger than the <laughs> than the yaks. I guess they showed them, right? Guess so. Just goes to show you can't be too careful. Can't be too careful, son. <laughs> What's that fucking mean? <laughs> the disdain he has for you. Yak territory up here? Not in a long time. Not in the years. Not since... Whew. I mean, I remember when this whole place was yak territory. But, you know, then things things go certain ways. And he kind of leans in. He goes, but what I heard, they'd gotten a few warnings <laughs> from the yaks. These hot shots that they were above it. Thought, oh, I'm just going to keep making all my money. Didn't wet the beak. You got to wet the beak, son. I learned a long time ago from my dojo. If you don't wet the beak of a yak, <laughs> I don't even know how to finish that sentence. Right. right. Expect an attack. Expect an attack. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's an old one, but a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Many thanks. I'm, I'm going to slosh the fizzy goo one last time. Like, I'm just holding it up. Cheers. And he takes a little bit of a liking to you. Just something about that that saying you said that he could share with you in that moment. He goes, he's like, on the house. He throws a big league chew into the bag. <laughs> nice. <laughs> a big league chew that's definitely been there for like 40 years. Meanwhile, Tina's over across the street. She's kind of scoping out this abandoned, it's abandoned building, right? That, we, yep. that she was set up on. It's just kind of like looking for entrances. What does she see? It's just all boarded up. It doesn't look like it's got any real security keeping people out. Sure. It's just like boarded up windows that you could eat easily get into if you're trying to get in yeah satina's gonna walk right over to one of the plywood boarded up window and just wrench her her fingernails underneath that try to rip that plywood off just pull it back i'm gonna say you're able to do it it's just plywood yeah. tina's able to rip that shit off and she's kind of quiet about it she doesn't try to make a scene right sure pulls it back slow lets it pop a few times crack and then like drops it on the ground takes a look over her shoulder and peeks inside that window just to see if there's anything inside the window is like tarnished like this building has been vacant a long time you can tell yeah. and um but you can kind of see inside and it just looks musty and old just dust and like you know old wallpaper falling off the walls yeah. kind of shit, you know? And Tina's got her, her thermographic vision naturally because she's a troll, so she can see really well. I was going to say, could you scan when I got back there, scan the building, see if you see anybody inside. Mm. John's very cautious. She's got her thermographic vision. I don't think she has anything else that's of use right now. So what she's going to do is just go ahead and step right in through that, like look over her shoulder one more time, see if anybody's looking, and step right in through that window. I'm saying, can she, like, when she gets to a perch... Can she, like, see with the thermal vision, like, into the kick chip place? Yes. Can we scan that? I do have an idea. She's tiptoeing through this abandoned building. She's going to go up to, is it a single story or a two story? I'll, we'll say this one's a two story. She goes up the stairs to the upper level, to the second floor, and finds a window opening. There's still boarded up windows up there, but they're more sparse, and she can see right between a big gap in the wood to the building next door. She pulls out her shotgun microphone. I thought I had a laser microphone. Oh, I do. I have a laser mic, level six. She pulls out her laser mic, level six. Does she see any windows on the building next door that aren't shot out? You see one uh, on the south end, so facing you. Yeah. I'm going to paint the picture a little bit better, too. As you're walking this abandoned building, like rats are scattering as you're walking into certain doorways. The floor is creaking and shit. These windows on the second floor are not as boarded because, like, it's not keeping... It's on second floor, so people can't, like, climb through it or anything. Yeah. You can see it now with a closer look that on the eastern side of the southern-facing wall, it looks like an explosion happened that blew down that wall there. Fuck. Okay. And it's been all patched and boarded up, like, just by the police or whoever after so they en- So they fucking entered it, then. So that window's gone. They needed something. On the uh, western side of the south wall, there's glass 
that you can yeah. maybe get a bounce okay. off of that. So mic. she's gonna get a she's gonna shoot her laser mic onto that glass to feel the vibrations, just to do a surveillance to see if there's any voices in there, anybody around, anybody mm-hmm. hanging around. She wants to see if anybody's there, and she's also got her binocular eyepiece on with her thermographic natural troll vision. So mm-hmm. she's she's zoomed in, scanning around any openings, any holes in the walls, any busted out windows. But she's got her laser mic on that window, and she's listening in to hear if there's any voices next door. John's going to come in, and he's just going to plop down. Nice. Anything, Boom Meal? Just give me one sec here. Let me let me adjust this laser mic. <laughs> get it uh, get it tuned in to the right, uh, right harmonic to see if we can hear anything here, John. All right, hot shot. And she rolls her... Uh, nice. You tell me how it works. Well, I'm trying is to it, think here. I think it's a it's... level six laser mic, so I don't know what that means. So here's how this is going to work. We're going to use your intelligence... Okay. The rating is actually there for the target number in case someone's trying to white noise it out. Oh. So if it's yeah, like yeah, if yeah. it's like a five. Okay. But that level six is going to help you. Okay. So we're going to knock it down. The, it's going to be a target number two. This thing's really nice. Three dice instead of six dice. Yep. A three, a two, and a two. Three successes. Okay. It's funny to make you roll that, but you could have crit failed, I guess. No, no, yeah. You yeah. get a fucking perfect bead on uh, this pane of glass yeah. here, crystal clear inside this building. Not really hearing anything of interest. You're just about to pull the laser away, and you hear, like, motorcycles approaching. Really? Through the laser mic? or Yeah, through... your, your laser mic, you can hear, like, motorcycles sort of approaching the building. Not yours, but that building. Tina reaches out, grabs John Schuller. John, wait. And from your vantage point, both of you looking out the windows can see three Suzuki Auroras, which are racing bikes, okay. pull up and what are clearly looking Yakuza. I mean, they've got like fuck, the suits on and everything. They're in like full fucking like biker jackets on. But when they take them off, they're in like fucking like suit jackets. Mm. They're sporting different fucking like colorful mohawk type like, hairdos and shit. They've all got fucking Uzis slung on their shoulders. Fuck. I want to put like oats on a uh, a tripod stand and like kind of lean it in the window. Like, like just to kit you know he's got it covered you're gonna have it or you're gonna point the gun at them at the building okay yeah you can do that just in case like western style just in case like they fucking see us or something like john's ready gotcha not that that's gonna happen do you actually put the laser on them because you have a laser don't you have a laser no plug? no okay. laser no no laser no laser okay. this just is just it. purely covering his ass they pull up into this uh alleyway on the eastern side of the building away from the highway on the back side of the building and park there. And Tina, you're able to actually hear their conversation. Okay. Nice. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Are they speaking in English or what are they speaking in? Yeah, they're speaking in English. You know, the Yakuza enlists people from this area too, not just Japanese people, but... And they're talking and they're like... What, what are we looking for? You heard him? Fucking spirit found something in here. Spirit. The spirit. They walk over to like this back door, kind of like a back alleyway door. Tina's binocular IP zooms in on what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. they've got keys to it. And they unlock the back door Fuck. and walk inside. They're here looking for something. They said, the spirit said something's in here. I don't like this. I got ears on them with the laser where it is right now. Fucking magic shit. I don't know if we're exposed here. I don't know how to defend against magic. <laughs> <laughs> Tina's laser mic is set up, like zeroed in. It's got little dials on it to adjust its azimuth and its dip. And and she's got it on that window. Mm-hmm. It remotes into her head wirelessly. We can leave this laser mic right here and keep track of what they're saying. But if we need to move in closer, John, we can do that. So I want her to like split an earbud with me. So I've got, so I can listen I at the same that. time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Tina pulls out an old set of earbuds she found on the ranch from like 2009, <laughs> pre-Tina's birth. And like, she plugs it into the jack on her forearm and they both put an earbud in their ear and they Sick. listen in. I love the stakeout. I love the 80s, like fucking lethal weapon. Exactly. Like stakeout you guys are doing. Tina's trying to follow them through the openings of the windows and the holes in the wall of this building with her zoomed in binocular eyepiece with thermographic vision as they go. She's just, they're just going to hunker down and listen a little bit more. Exactly. Sure. Do you hear them start to bicker? What did it say? We found a ship. We found a ship in here. Yeah. So we just have to find it. Spirit. You didn't tell me exactly. Just kind of gave me a bit of a preliminary. You hear the other voice go, Don't look so happy. You're not getting a fucking promotion or anything out of this. And the guy's like, You told him it wasn't a good idea to leave the Earth of Spirit here. He, he had a good idea. You got to give it to him. He's going to tap Tina on the shoulder. Yeah, John. I'm going over there. I'm going to cut the gas lines on their bikes. Do it, John. Like while they're inside. <laughs> yes. 
Do it, John. See if I can stall him. I'll dial in your sub vocal. We can keep this conversation going. All right, I want to see if I can sneak over there. Using his stealth skill, his force. Roll me your stealth skill, John. Target number is going to be five because it's challenging. They're not really paying attention to what's outside the Dude, building. Dude, you're not going to believe this, but I got three fives in the six. Yes! John is a yes! fucking ghost. Fuck yeah. As he slinks across this building. And Tina, you're watching, you're seeing like a full sprinted- Moves like a fucking cat. Yeah, full sprinted run. Huge strides and no sound. He is trying to watch the, the Akuza in the building, but like John's moves are so fucking distractingly <laughs> perfect. <laughs> She can't look away. <laughs> I imagine like before John leaves, like he's like so sweaty and he like cracks his back and you're kind of not sure if he's going to be able to pull this off. <laughs> yeah, it does some stretches. <laughs> and then and I want I want to take off like his coat. Like he strips down to like his fucking, like, you know, Blade has like the sick coat. I want to keep bringing up Blade since we watched that on our retreat. <laughs> he he yeah. takes off the coat and he's got like the fucking muscle tank. Oh yeah. You know, like the sleek, he's in sleek mode. I want to say that John's as ripped as Wesley Snipes, but we already established he's not it's swayze ripped he's swayze ripped in roadhouse yeah so, exactly yeah. little pecs little biceps yeah, but he's yeah. oiled fast greased and wax the deadliest of pecs <laughs> yeah. 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 and he's ned flanders ripped <laughs> underneath <laughs> yeah <laughs> full gated fucking run across the street super fast and there's no sound not even a leaf stirs as he runs past it like he's so fucking stealthy and he goes across the way and gets into the back alley behind that building you're not taking the bike apart. You're just cutting the fucking line, right? Yeah, yeah so exactly. got it, got it, got it. You got snip it, yeah. all three lines. You can still hear Tina. Both of you guys are listening inside, and now it's not, they're still kind of bickering, but you can just hear them rummaging inside. You can't see them or anything, but you can hear them like searching. John, yeah, that be square with me. Do you want to go into that building, or do you want to stay outside? I think I should go in. John, get into that door. I got Hall and Oates with me. The like, drop of a pin, I could be over there. No, you cover get in me. There. You cover me. You're in a perfect position. Keep in mind, Tina, you don't. You have a shotgun. You don't have anything ranged, really. We, we figured out what they want. We figured out what they're looking for. She's gonna go down across the street, up to the building. I wonder if I can snake along the side of the building up close, start shooting once once Tina makes a noise. Well, we gotta kind of see if they find what they find first, because if they find it for us. Then we got what we need already. So maybe we just sneak through right now to try to stay mm -hmm. silent. We let them do the work for us, ambush them at the bikes. You got it. So now we're just sneaking through. Now we're just sneaking through the building and trying to listen in to what's going okay. on. So Tina's oh, okay. Tina's going to go to the back of the building and kind of... Is that where the bike... Where are the bikes? In the back. Yeah, the bikes are parked in the back. There's three Auroras parked there. So John sliced all the lines and then he's going to the front of the building. Tina's going down the stairs, across the street, and up to the back of the building and just find a, uh, a hiding place back there. Like behind a big fucking dumpster or something like that. You smell gas as you're walking across your the yeah. gas is starting to kind of pool around these bikes. Tina, roll me a quickness. Quickness of five. Target number is gonna be eight to be stealthy. She got a five highest. No successes. You you get across the street, okay. But as you get closer to the building, you're you're stepping on glass okay. and it's crunching from some of the buildings that Shit. are broken outside. You hear someone go, There it is. I got it, I got it. And then you hear someone go, Shh, shut the fuck up. Tina's already dialed into John's sub vocals so, John. John, be quiet. John, be quiet. W Tina's whispering right now. <laughs> I think they heard me. I'm coming up on them. Should I roll another stealth to see if are I can... Are you going into the building, John? Yeah, going through the front door. Let's see if I can get to where they are without them seeing me. Okay, roll me another stealth, John. This, this is going to be a little harder. This is going to be uh, I understand. seven. Target number seven. Difficult. Do it, John. You got this. I got one six. Okay, so you got it. You got a seven. That's an automatic seven because you have to right. get a one. You're... Like rolling the balls of your heels over this glass and making zero noise. Like there's a shit ton of glass on the sidewalk and you're you're rolling across it quickly. Fuck yes. You get to the front door. It's literally just taped off. Like it's a glass door that's been shot through or whatever, but there's just tape. It's not even really boarded up. I want to slip in and just see if I can get close to him. I'm going to have you roll me another stealth because this is much different. This is going to be an eight target number. Okay. One fell off, so I got to re-roll that. Any sixes? I got one, six, two, fives. Okay, roll that six for me. You need at least a two. You got this. Three. Yes! Fucking John is a yeah, ghost. Dude. 
Yes. Imagine like the low thumping bass sound of like a fucking 80s action stealth song. Boom, boom, boom. And you're like fucking pulling the tape over. You can hear just the slight sound of the tape being pulled up and down. You're spidering in through these fucking broken glass <laughs> panes into this building. And what you see is what looks like kind of like a little reception desk. I mean, it's all trash. There's blood stains on the floor. I mean, it's, it's all crusted over. Glass all over the place. You can see a long room. There's some modern looking couches, seating area for people waiting maybe to have a meeting with someone or whatever. There's glass conference rooms all along the left side of the building on, the, on the north side, right? Yeah. And straight ahead, you're on the east side of the building is where it looks like uh, the reception area and sort of where yeah. people would be seated, whatever. And toward the back, you can see where that explosion happened. Yeah. And it's just black and all along the floor and everything's blown across the room there where that explosion had happened. Yeah, so it was a breach. Yeah, a yeah. breach. Yeah, yeah. So there's two doors on the left that enter what is presumably more of the office area. Okay. And then one door in the back that is open that leads into sort of like a bathroom area. So they're in the bathroom area? You can get roll me an intelligence if you want to see if you can hear where they're at. Uh, target number is going to be five. Two sixes. Two sixes, yes. Nice. Tina, you can roll that too. Rolling hot tonight. You were able to hear someone closer to that back door. Five, a four, and a three. You hear the voices are pretty close to that door that you're waiting near. Yeah, in the back alley. Yeah. John, you can hear kind of like sh- like sh- shushing and like glass crunching and shit inside. And it's on like almost the kitty corner of where you're at. It's in the northeastern corner of where this building is on the other side of these conference room walls. John, I got him over on that side of the building. All right, well, can I sneak up on him? Yeah, roll me a stone. We're getting all of these rolls. We'll see what John does. Or you can always flush them my way, too. They're probably going to run for their bikes. That's true. They got what they need. I know. I kind of just wanted to get as close as I could so that I'm, it's a fucking kill. Sh- it's like I can yeah, fucking... Dude. Yeah, at least get one of them. Catch them. Get one of them and the rest will run. Yeah. Target number is five. One, six. You're able to pull open this double door, and I mean, it's like shattered glass, like like still in the pane. Dude, this is diehard. It's like wobbling. It's like really worried it's going to like fall and smash, but you're able to creak it open and nothing falls. Yeah. And you walk through these doors, and you see now what looks like you're in the middle of like the pit of where these people work. There's two conference rooms to your left, and you're, you're, you're walking north now, going into the back of the building are just all these sort of workstations, a bunch of different like cubicles that people worked at, but like very like open floor, open floor plan. And there's this blood everywhere. Computer terminals, like bullets have shot straight through them. Jesus. All the way in the back end of the room, there's another pair of doors that go toward this like back area. You can see the back of one of these Yakuza guys. Okay, obviously I need to go up there and Metal Gear Solid slit this guy's throat. All right. We're going to roll with your reaction. Do your thing, John. You got to kind of scare these guys out, though, because you're in the building with three dudes and I'm not. So, like, you don't want to kill one of them and then be fighting two of well, them. Why don't I just grab a human shield? Do it. I do it. I'm going to go grab one human shield. I've got a human shield opportunity. <laughs> human shield opportunity. <laughs> Copy that. You need me in there, John? Right after I get the shield, yes. You got it. You're going to count it off? Our reaction is five with parentheses nine. Oh, which, Jesus Christ. <laughs> John's okay. going to annihilate all three of these guys in one fell swoop. Jesus, why am I even rolling? God damn. <laughs> so I roll nine dice? Oh my God. That's a lot. Yeah, dude. roll nine dice. Target number four. <laughs> What'd you get? Hold on, I haven't rolled it yet, but it's like, do I even need to? Uh, oh my God, he got you one do. success. He got one success. I mean, there's so many successes, it's like that is worth <laughs> It's un- un- incomprehensible the amount of successes I, I have. Seven. Holy shit. Successes. Okay. Dude. I mean, yeah. I mean, dude. They shouldn't, the other two guys shouldn't even know the guy's dead when you get there. This dude's so laser focused on the back door, and, and apparently all three of them are staring at the back door, trying to figure out what they're going to do. You run across this room so fucking fast that when you catch him, he like jumps. Like, you scare the fuck out of him, and you have a hold of him now. What do you do with him? Okay, so I've got my my pistol, my fachetti. Is that what it's called? Fachetti pistol? You get your fachetti, yeah. Fuck, what am I going to say? Catch you fuckers at a bad time. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> We're going to roll initiative now. So oh, you must have him grappled, though, right? Like, you got... To, I got, like, like an what's... arm around it, his neck, and, like, gun to head. Gun to head. Gun to head. He's human shielded. Well, actually, I'm not going to do anything yet, but, Tina, if, if you move... Initiative starts. I'm just going to say, because no one's moving yet. It's a standoff. I want to say, Gina's not barreling in there, but she opened that back door as quietly as possible, and she's moving. It's already open. Let me throw a line and let them take it. Give me the chip. And they all look at each other fucking sweaty, like nervously, like, what the fuck? How's this person know? Can Tina stealth in while, while he's saying that? Okay, they're looking at each other right now. Like, what the what the fuck? How how does this guy know this? Roll me a stealth, Tina. This That's is what, how this is going down. Roll me a stealth. Your target number is going to be eight. 
Ah, none. None. They're looking at each other, and you, one of them is about to talk, and you hear the fucking crunch of glass. God damn and it, two Gina. of them fucking turn. The door just goes... <laughs> the door just creaks really loud. John's yeah. gonna be kind of pissed, like, fucking <laughs> shit, Tina! And they both turn around. Fuck! Initiative rolled right now. All right, all right, all no right, shooting, all right. no shooting, no shooting, nah. one d 6 plus 4. <laughs> yeah. I got a 5. 20? <laughs> 20, all right. We're gonna roll their reaction now. Ooh, eight. Eight. Six. All right, what'd you get, Tina? Tina got a five. The creak happens. Two of them turn with their fucking Uzis right toward where Tina made the noise. But John, your wired reflexes like flood your brain all of a sudden. You're amped. All right, John's going to obviously shoot the guy he has, and then he's going to pull out hollow notes oh, sh and fucking try to shoot the other guy. The dude in your arms is dead. Yeah. I'm just letting you, you, you. You fucking point blank shoot this dude. I mean, that's just stupid. That's, he's yeah, dead. Thank you. His fucking brains explode all over the other dried up blood in this room. Yeah, just yeah. Poof, like blows straight through onto the wall. Just paints his wall red to the left. You know what, Bob? I'm glad you fucking let me fuck these people up. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> and you got one more shot you can take with the fachetti. I'd rather waste it on getting hollow notes out. Don't waste anything, because I'm gonna get shot. Okay, fine. Fucking A. I'll fucking shoot another guy in the fucking back. Okay, so with your fachetti, you get another shot. Roll me your firearms Firearms skill. is five. Target number is going to be four. Target number is four. Fucking waste this guy, John. I have a five and a three and three twos. One success. What's the damage code on your weapon, on your pistol? Six. He got three successes, so he will stage that down to, what'd you say it was? Six L? Six L. His jacket's got, he's got a little line Fuck. vest underneath, and that fucking pistol round hits dead center. It does knock him off balance, but you can tell it did, wasn't a kill. You can just tell just the way it hits. Well, I'm going to sling hollow nodes after that. I just need to get okay. a few shots off. You're just dropping the fucking pistol as you're like yeah, going down the to pistol. Get <laughs> now, yeah. ganger number two. Fuck. No, actually, see, we shot him in the, actually in the back, but it didn't kill him because they were both turning toward right. Tina. The other guy is raising up his fucking Uzi to shoot at you, Tina. So he's going to shoot damn at you. It, dude. I'm going to get fucked up. Sorry, Tina. No, Let's it's see. my fault. I came in. It's worth it. We haven't done anything crazy for an episode. <laughs> Three successes. God damn it. Shit. Gina, you get to roll your body. Get to roll my body. That's ten dice, body. yo. Target number is going to be... 6M. So target number 6 minus your armor. What's your armor? Ballistic 5, impact 3. Oh, Jesus Christ. 6 minus 5 is 1. Right? Fuck! That's how that works. Ten successes. Jesus Christ, do you have ten what? successes? I have ten bodies. Oh, right, 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 because it's one. Hell yeah. So it's target number two. It's got to be target. It can't go lower than two. I still have ten successes because I got no Holy ones. Holy shit, No dude. ones. That is a tight, rock-solid body. She just, like, drops to a knee, like, twists sideways and throws her arm up and, like, holds her jacket up as she does it and just, like, <laughs> takes the full brunt of that fucking <laughs> Uzi. Yeah, and like just, a Zorro. Like, ping yeah, Zorro's that shit, just, like, pings off of her ten successes of her Good ballistic Lord. five armored jacket that Tina oh, rocks. Yeah. All Fuck right, yes. so Yakuza guy number two is shot in the back. He turns around to shoot at John. Fuck off. Oh my God. That is five successes. Shit. Oh. So John, your body, and you can use combat dice as well. I'm going to use all six. John's learning. Right, your target number is going to be six minus your armor. I'm going to give you partial cover because you got that guy in front you of you. got the guy in front of you. Well, yeah. I shot him. Yeah, but you're still holding him as a shield. Eight. So he's got two successes on. What was your armor again, John? Armor jacket is five. Armor clothing, ballistic three. You took your jacket off. So you're using your armored clothing Shit. now. Three. Did he? Yeah, he did, three. Did. Yeah, he took it off to be sweet. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's what he did. He did. He did. He's he glistening, did. glistening body. You caught me. You caught me. Six minus three is three, though. Still target number three. So you're rolling all those dice for target number three. Which you should got be this, dude. Well, I'm rolling ten dice. You can roll all of your combat dice if you want. On defense, you can roll as many as you want. But then I don't get them back again. Not until the next turn, but you're good because you're going to come up next. Yeah, fuck yeah. it. I'm rolling it. So ten dice. Ten dice, target number three. I mean, this is ridiculous. Do this, dude. It is actually, it's actually ridiculous. I mean, yeah. So many successes. Well, count them up. You have to at least stage it down, One, but here's two, the thing. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my god, seven successes? So you have to get six successes to stage it all the way down. And you got seven. And you did. So I should use that guy as a human shield. Let him yeah, fucking... The dude, <laughs> you're holding, and he's like rattling, like as the bullets all fucking impact his chest. And you're just holding fucking steady. Like, it, hold him firm. <laughs> now it's Tina's turn. There's two... There's still two up. Two Yakuza in there right now, right? Tina's just going to go ahead and fucking unholster that T-250 short shotgun. 
and level it at the guy closest to her. Do I get two shots with that? You do. It's semi auto. Yeah, you do. Yeah, so she's going to take one shot at the first guy. So roll your specialization in T250 shotgun. Five dice for Tina on the T250. Fucking A. Five and four twos. Target number was uh, four. So one success is all. Because you're all so close to each other. I mean, you guys are all within like 10 feet of each other. Yeah, right? we're fucking close. So he's going to roll his body. And what's the power on that shotgun? Defy C250 shotgun. 10 serious. Jesus Christ. So 10 minus three for his armor is seven. He got no successes. Fuck yes! yes. You just see it fucking like soak his shirt. Just every fucking pellet just goes straight into his chest. Which guy is this? Is this the guy that I hit before? He turned around and shot at John. So his back is now again toward Tina and he gets shot in the back again. Because that would <laughs> make this sense. Time, like, if you see it fucking hit all of his like neck and shit. Yeah. You fucking shoot the guy that just shot at John basically. Yeah. And hit this dude right in the back and you just see the blood him. soak. Yeah, go, that, that damaged back of his armor just gets taken through. He's down. He just falls down. He's like, Ugh! But I get a second shot, right? You get a second shot. Fuck yeah. But I can only get a second shot. I can't do another complex move, right? No. This is question time. Can I take a shot that's non-lethal on the second guy? You could aim it someplace where it wouldn't shoot kill him. Shoot him in the leg. I want to shoot the second guy right in the dick area with the shotgun. Right. Fuck, dude, that's cold. Just annihilate his pelvis area. That's Damn. cold, man. What the hell and are you doing? And what she does is the old rooster Cogburn, because Tina's got the Terminator, the lever action T250 on the reload. Terminator 2 fucking pistol grip. Lever action spins that thing. <laughs> racks it. And shoots the second guy right in the fucking pelvis. Yikes. Tries to drop him to the ground. Aim shot. What are you doing that for? I, I want to keep him alive in case we want to talk to him. I so mean, I yeah, it's a brutal shoot his kneecap. I love it. Right but I want to go to center mass. So Tina's not a guy. She doesn't have the same. Clearly not. Minus one. Called shot supposed to be more than called that. shot. Take aim. Take aim. Oh, I see. Basically, if you're going to try and shoot, take aim at something, you would forfeit your shot this turn. Oh. It's a simple action. So you would basically take aim like ready down the sights. And then the next turn, you could take a shot at that area. So I don't want to do that. I think we just find the chip on the dude. So I'm just going to fucking blow this guy away. I'm just going to take the second shot. She Rooster Cogburn spins that thing. Racks it. Takes the shot. Here comes five dice. Five dice on the T250. All right. She's got two fives, a three, and a two and a one. Two successes. He's going to roll his body. Also two successes. And his, but I win. Oh. But you win. Now they're serious. You fucking shoot this guy too. They're both on the ground. They're actually both alive that are on the ground. They're seriously wounded. They're not deadly wounded. Oh, I didn't kill the first guy? They're both writhing on the ground going, oh! Holy shit. And John's up. Could John like get on one guy and just put the fucking oats right up to the guy's fucking head? Yeah. As that happens, the air chills in the room. What? You notice the Japanese guy with mystical tattoos on his neck. Oh, fuck. He's whispering under his breath, and the what? air chills in the room. And you see a fucking creature pop out of existence, just fucking out of smoke. It's a short little bearded skull. What? With a weird body. Fuck. And you see it, like, look at you with blue flame eyes that are just kind of like, as they're tracking, like, they're leaving, like, tracer lines in the air. They're just so fucking trippy. What? It's, like, looking at you, John, like, it's about the, I'm going to roll its initiative here. Fuck. Shit. <laughs> this guy has some sort of magic tattoo. Fucking magic shit. It's not the guy that you're on. It's the other dude. The Japanese dude. Wait, did I have to? I didn't have to roll quickness for no, that? No, yeah, you just I got, just on, got him. on him. Uh, yo, everyone roll me initiative. Uh, Tina got a seven. 21. Oh, oh fuck. fuck. God damn, dude. The, the fucking reaction of the spirit is fucking 20. Yes. No. You beat the fucking spirit. <laughs> Holy shit. You can feel it moving fast. I and mean, it's unnatural. It's not fucking living. It's a fucking spirit right before your eyes manifested in the physical realm. But I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah, oh. But your wired <laughs> reflexes kick in and it's like slows down and you're starting slows to move faster down. than it is. Like you're fucking enhanced. Nice machine versus magic. <laughs> yeah. Just eked out performance better than this fucking creature. Good thing I upgraded the quickness this season. <laughs> a matrix slow motion moment. Exactly. Of just like almost time stopped. So what do you do? I think you, it's manifested physically, so you can still do damage to it physically. My question is, do I shoot the guy who summoned it? Does that kill? And <laughs> Ben's just like smiling at you. I do knows. We don't know how to play this game. Fuck. Go with your gut, John. If you want to shoot the dude who summoned it, do it. That's what I'm going to do. Do it, dude. I'm fucking doing See it. See what happens. All right. Roll me your firearms. He's prone. I mean, it's like target number two. I mean, this is a joke. I'm doing and it. You can use up to five combat dice. I don't think I need to in this instance. All right. 
All successes. Fuck, five successes. I'm just imagining John like full on burst to this dude's head and his head just fucking blows open like a ripe melon. <laughs> I think I think John should be like scared though. Like it's like a fire's all on the ground, like <laughs> like like <laughs> yeah. And it catches him, his head fucking jerks as one of a couple of rounds hit his fucking head is gored. You hear this thing just fucking do like a shrill scream as it fucking tears back into fucking yes. astral space and just Fuck, sucks out. John, you did it! Yes. You fucking did it! <laughs> John stayed frosty. He followed his fucking he instincts. Followed his gut, dude. There's not even any lights in this place, but the light in this room like flickers as it sucks out. You guys are so fast, but Tina's like frozen in time, <laughs> but only her eyeballs move to like track what's happening in slow motion. Holy shit. This guy's head fucking explodes all over the fucking building. I can't believe that. That fucking, I'm imagining that spirit just like floating towards me and me just yeah. like quickly like, yeah. and like one of the bullets just hits the guy. Like the dude with the fucking marmot in the tub. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> exactly. That's the right. You chose correctly. Fuck yes. Fuck yeah, man. And um, this guy on the ground, he's like, fuck you. Fuck you, man. And he's like bleeding out. And he's like, the chip. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. He's like, it's on him. The chip's on him. And he's like motioning over to the fucking Japanese dude that you just shot. I'm going to go pick it up. Are we out of initiative? Yeah, you're out of initiative now. Like you got this. Guy. As John goes over and picks up that chip, Tina walks up to the guy who's talking and looks down at him and just says, Where's Thorber? Who? That's what I thought. And she takes up one big fucking troll boot and just <laughs> Wait, plops bomb, it bomb down on his fucking head <laughs> and crushes that thing into fucking pulp. Oh, Mia, one question? I love it. I love it. His fucking head fucking smashes like into like melon pieces. It's blown <laughs> oh, Mia, you're everywhere. fucking crazy and I love you, but what the fuck are you doing? Sorry, Jan. Your wild ass came in here, stepped on all the glass, bumbled in here, smashed that guy's head. You're crazy. <laughs> I imagine, John, like you just leaned over for a second just to reach in the jacket pocket of that dude and get his chip. <laughs> And as you turn back, like the boot just smashes that dude's head. Yeah. And, and John on. catches a little brain in his eyes, just like yeah, gets him a little, like, a little splatter. You're a fucking loose cannon. Sorry, Jack. What you have in your fingers is a Simpsons chip. It looks kind of like what you would see a beetle or a Simpsons chip. No offense, Tina, but do you know what this is? Yeah, I've seen him before. Does this one look different? Does this look... It looks like a Simpsons chip. It has, like, masking tape on it, and, like, a, it just says something like proto or some kind of, like, coder speak for what could be on this thing. Tina lumbers up to John. She says, we've all got our vices, John. And she kind of hunkers down low and peeks in closer, like, this one looks real nice, though. We sure do. And I want to, like, flip open, like, a little locket on oats and just, like, do a quick little bump. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> He's back! Yeah. This is above my price point, John. We should probably take this in, see what's on it. Sounds good. You have a chip jack also, Tina, just so you remember. It's, like, in your head. You can slot this thing in your fucking right, head. Right as you're about to do it, I, I'm going to, like, fucking put my hand out and be like, Landline. John, she paid us to do a job. No, no, no. Th her fucking implant. It was charred. Don't fucking stick that shit in your head. What are you fucking crazy? You don't know where it's been. You don't know where it's been. <laughs> You're a fucking loose cannon tonight, but I'm not going to let you fucking do anything too fucking stupid. You're fine. That's good. That's good. You're the brains of the operation. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Pink Fohawk. You can check out new episodes every two weeks. Until then, we'd be hugely thankful if everyone listening could post about our podcast on Reddit or Twitter or leave a review on Podchaser or Apple Podcasts or even just share our show with a couple of friends. That'd be awesome. Thanks again for giving us your time. It's the most precious commodity any person has. Pink Fohawk theme created by Colin Rufino. You can find links to his website in the description below along with credits for other songs used in this episode. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Can I ask, is Come and Spit a canon Shadowrun nope. name? That's you. Come okay. and Split is me, and I just think that's funny. to Because here's the thing. Come and go. Come and go. Come and come go. And, go. Yeah. and I always yeah. thought, like, why would they spell it come? Like, like it just made it look like fucking come. K-U-M. I remember one time someone called it the ejaculate and evacuate. Yeah. Which I thought was funny. Come and Split is so much funnier. It just sounds like what a corporation would name something. Thinking, yeah. like, this sounds like, you know, exactly what it is. You come and then you split. <laughs> You split. No one can make fun of that name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>